This has been a great year to catch up on your backlog, I feel. There's been a decent amount of releases, no doubt about it, but when you look at the flurry of releases that 2023 was, we didn't really have a moment to breathe, and that especially registers with me when I look deeper into 2024. Sure, we have a lot of games announced, but I can have very few I can just mark on the calendar, but now one of them might be one of my most anticipated, perhaps foolishly so, in Dragon Age Dreadwolf. This game is apparently arriving at the end of 2024. It's been in development for a long while. We've covered it every step of the way, every report, every change in development. And we're gonna do that once more as we have a new scoop here from Jeff Grubb we're gonna go over. We're also going to talk about a new hire over at EA that's gonna have a significant impact on Bioware. And unfortunately, more layoffs hitting Bioware and what this means for the future of the company because I know some people don't really care, but it does have a pretty dramatic impact and we're gonna talk about that in one specific example. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here and you're into what's going on with Bioware, you're in the right place, consider subscribing. Let's start off at the top here with the report that Dragon Age Dreadwolf is arriving in 2024. This was quoted by Insider Gaming where they say Dragon Age Dreadwolf is scheduled to release this year. It's claimed according to new claims from Jeff Grubb on the latest this game mess, Dragon Age Dreadwolf, could potentially launch sometime in late 2024. In December 2023, Bioware officially confirmed that a full reveal is coming in summer 2024. Players can already wishlist it now on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, as we had already covered here before. Continuing on, Grubb also mentioned that Bioware employees felt confident about the window. Many of Grubb's previous statements on Game Press have also proven reliable later on. However, Grubb does mention that they are uncertain about when the release window will be revealed, so it may come earlier or later than the official announcement claims. This is actually kind of a big deal here because this tells us that we may learn the release date before the gameplay reveal. Maybe we learn it during the gameplay reveal, but summer 2024 is sneaking up on us and Bioware has been very quiet as expected. When we last covered that they were going to do a summer 2024 gameplay reveal, we knew that shut down the notion of any potential trailers appearing at the Game Awards. We knew that shut down the notion of any other gameplay appearances leading up to it. And I think that's because Bioware has made the mistake many times before of speaking too early and this is why i support their very much silent endeavor when it comes to dragon age dreadwolf because i feel they've talked themselves into corners so so often that it's better to get the game near completion where potentially it's out within four or five months from when we see it truly for the first time barring any separate leaks that we've covered here on the channel we see it for the first time knowing it's five months away and bioware can talk about the product we're actually going to play not this thing that was in prototype one of my big critiques of them was when i saw dragon Dragon Age Dreadwolf for the first time was this wireframe character model using a sword and shield. And right then and there, I went, look, Bioware, I appreciate the transparency. I understand what you're going for here, but this isn't the way you do it. If you have nothing to show, don't talk, don't create expectations, stop being your own worst enemy. So this seems like a good step in that direction, but let's focus on a 2024 release. When you look at Dragon Age as a series, Inquisition came out in... 2014. So yeah, it'll have been 10 years since our last entry in the Dragon Age franchise. And it's probably a good time to consider catching up because at least sometime within the next half a year or so, you're going to be playing a new Dragon Age game. And I definitely think that Dragon Age 2 is going to play a major factor into what's going on with Dreadwolf with the Red Lyrium and whatnot. Keep in mind, though, that Dragon Age Dreadwolf may face some interesting competition this year. Not only did Baldur's Gate 3 come out and remind people that, wow, a Bioware-style RPG, when, when I'm talking about that, I mean, like, the dialogue, the interactions, the romance, like, all that stuff is very Bioware-coded. When you have that game that just came out and people were talking about Bioware, kind of shitting on them right away, and then you have Dragon Age Dreadwolf following that up, which is definitely going to be more of an action-oriented game, you're already kind of in a weird position, and then you have Avowed coming out at the end of the year. Now, I say that Avowed is probably gonna get delayed, that's my prediction, because I just look at that game and I think, it doesn't seem ready. Like, everything about it seems very janky, and I know it's Obsidian, but something seems very off about it. Still, if it releases, Obsidian has been scary consistent, where you have to at least give them the benefit of the doubt. And when you have two fantasy RPGs going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, it definitely presents a situation where Hopefully, Dragon Age Dreadwolf is presenting the best possible Bioware nowadays. I know confidence for them is very low. I'm not going to try to convince people otherwise, but I am holding out hope that this does deliver. And, and the reason for that is just because they've spent so long with it and they understand the back is against the wall. And especially now you look at the layoffs that have been decimating the industry. 
and Bioware will absolutely get hammered if this game does not perform well. As I have mentioned in the past in prior Bioware videos, the word confidence has been something they've liked to use. I remember hearing that they were very confident in what they were making and that what they were gonna show would feel like a return to form. And then seeing here, we're confident this is gonna release at this time period. And Gary McKay did bring in a whole new breed of leadership there at Bioware. So I'm hoping that the winds of change have truly blown through Bioware and that they are going to release one of their best games in a long while come the end of this year. But no doubt we'll be on top of everything that Dragon Age Dreadwolf is doing this year. And it's funny because when I look at the coverage this year, we've talked about a ton of things, but we usually have a few games we attach ourselves to for a long time. Like we had Starfield, Cyberpunk, Baldur's Gate, and like all those games came out at once. So we just haven't really had something to attach ourselves to for a while. So Dragon Age Dreadwolf might just be it for this year, unless the Oblivion remake gets announced, which is pretty funny to think about. But nonetheless, we have a brand new bit of exclusive news here from IGN where they report Connie Booth, one of the chief architects of PlayStation's first party studio system, is joining EA. Former PlayStation executive Connie Booth, one of the chief architects of PlayStation's first party strategy before her unexpected departure in 2023, is joining EA to help lead its studios amid its ongoing restructure. Booth's title will be Group General Manager Action RPG, very interesting job title there, with a portfolio that would include EA Motive with Iron Man, Cliffhanger with Black Panther, and Bioware with Dragon Age and Mass Effect. She will report directly to EA Entertainment head Laura Mealy. Before I go any further, just know that Connie Booth is so important to PlayStation that while she's not like one of the known names, like we've talked about different names in the industry in the past, like Phil Spencer, Jim Ryan, we, we've talked about, we just mentioned Gary McKay, like these are names we're kind of growing familiarity with. Connie Booth was a very quiet but effective part of PlayStation success. And we're about to read why, but when she had unexpectedly been removed from PlayStation, there were ex developers from PlayStation, current developers from PlayStation going, yo, what are we doing here? Why her? She seemed to have a dramatic impact on the quality of PlayStation's first party, which we know has always been fantastic. To lose her is a traumatic loss for PlayStation, but a tremendous gain for EA and hopefully a good management tool for Bioware, who I think needs it more than anybody. So let's read here. Connie spent more than 30 years helping to build Sony Interactive Entertainment and Eternal Studios and is responsible for guiding the development of some of their biggest franchises, including Spider-Man 1 and 2, The Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, Uncharted, Ratchet and Clank, to name just a few, Millie said in a statement released to IGN. She is known for having created an incredible developer-first culture and supporting creative vision while driving innovation. I have known Connie for many years and have always been impressed by her love and commitment to games. She especially cares about game developers. She had an impeccable reputation within the development community and will undoubtedly have a positive impact on our games. Now, I know this is a statement from EA, so no doubt they're going to gas up their new hire, but that is not just lip service from what I have heard and from what I have read online, what I've seen from developer accounts like she is that chick like you want Connie Booth in the building and while no doubt with like the Black Panther game and the Iron Man game kind of confirming these are like action RPGs I don't know how I feel about that they're like Gotham Knights and Avengers I'm a little worried about like RPG mechanics in these superhero games I think we should take more of a look at Arkham and how you know replicating the hero has gone pretty well for us but I digress you look at Bioware who I think has had a lot of managerial issues and I think Gary McKay I know the real test will come when Dragon Age Dreadwolf comes out if it's in good quality, but Gary McKay, I feel, has made some very necessary decisions that other Bioware leaders had avoided. I think there were some unfortunate trimmings of the fat. I'm not advocating for layoffs, but I think they did need to trim down the studio, get smaller, because that's when Bioware was at their best. They also had to shed off the Old Republic, and they've sent that off to a separate studio now, and unfortunately, that means that game will eventually be sunset, but I think to get Bioware where it was, which was a single player RPG studio, these choices had to be made. But I think having an overhead here where you have someone like Connie seeing what's happening at Bioware and guiding them to success in a developer first environment, which Bioware has had its toxic work history, no doubt about it. This is really, really good to see. And EA must've had a convincing sales pitch and quite the bag offering to court her over from PlayStation to their building. So I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of impact she has. but. This did not come without significant layoffs, and I know all layoffs are very sad, but there was one in particular I wanted to highlight only because I feel like while we're gaining a lot of talent at EA and Bioware and stuff, 
they lost one of the main reasons I started to believe in EA and Bioware in the first place. I always said, dating back to Anthem, that I thought EA was a cheap scapegoat for Bioware, and that while EA is not perfect and they're responsible for a lot of the bad choices Bioware had made since they had acquired them, I don't think Anthem was necessarily fully EA's thoughts. And I always said that because when you look at how long it was in development for and how much money they poured into it, how long did EA have to be patient after like seven years of development and dramatic changes where you had to admit like Bioware was the bigger part of the problem here if they couldn't get their act in order? Were they not built for live service games? Absolutely true. Was it potentially forced on them? Absolutely. But Bioware definitely took an extremely long time to do this thing and we saw the output of that. From that point moving forward, it was back against the wall time. You have to start showing out here. You have to start getting in contact with your community. You have to start understanding what they want from you. And that really began with Mass Effect Legendary Edition and the leaks and rumors that happened with it. And one of my friends, uh, Jay Ingram, worked as a community manager at Bioware. And unfortunately, as he shows here, he had been laid off by EA. And this is one of the biggest mistakes they could have made, in my opinion. Admittedly, I'm biased. I know Jay, I would consider him a friend, but this was a horrendous mistake. And whoever gets this dude next is going to thrive because he is one of the main reasons, as I said earlier, I started to believe in Bioware and EA because I was like, he was in contact with multiple creators across all the Bioware games, trying to gauge feedback. He was responsible alongside his team for a lot of the work that was done for like the Mass Effect ARGs that we've covered here on the channel. Like he was at the core of a lot of things that drove that optimism and that excitement for Bioware games and obviously staying in contact to understand what these teams need to do and communicating those issues. There are different breeds of community managers. I think there are some that stand pat and kind of don't interact. And there's ones like Jay who will reach out to people like me. Hey, what'd you think of this? And take on the honest critical feedback. And I don't get that often because I'm not trying to boast myself up here a little bit, but I do tell it how it is. I don't mince words often because I feel like we live in an environment where we're trying to constantly coddle people. And I think there's a way of being nice and respectful while saying like, hey, this just didn't cut it. And I like that Jay was one of those community managers that would reach out and take in that feedback. And in fact, I did make a pretty big mistake in my Immortals of Avium review and posted that thing early, like 12 hours early because I misread the time on the embargo. And he, alongside EA, were super cool with that because I messed it up big time, which I never do that. So I think they lost a real one here. It's unfortunate. Just know these layoffs do have dramatic impacts. And I wanted to spotlight this one here. While we did have a great hire, unfortunately, there was a layoff that I think will affect the Bioware community in a meaningful way. But hopefully the rest of the community team stays in touch, stays in contact, not just for me, but for the rest of you, because I wasn't involved in like that ARG for Mass Effect. They got artists involved. They got main members of the Mass Effect community involved. Like that's what they did. So it was cool to see. Hopefully the team keeps up what Jay's amazing work was. And obviously we'll see in due time. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, that's what's going on right now with Dragon Age, Dreadwolf, and Bioware. I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts down below. So please fire away. And with that, take excellent care of yourselves. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.